It's been challenging in, first and foremost, in the lack of infrastructure and processing uh, here in this country. Um, it's the, the industry is just kind of coming out of its shell, so to speak. So to um, process the organic waste into a useful, reusable, sustainable material within uh, a reasonable distance has been a challenge. So um, we're actually breaking ground on one of the first um, biorefineries in the state um, at hopefully the end of this year um, to create these regional circular economies. The infrastructure is not really there. Once you travel more than 100 miles with, it could be the most sustainable material on earth, the, it, it yeah. immediately degrades that value. Yeah. So um, I, I think restock was a little bit uh, ahead of its time in the sense that the industry wasn't uh, producing as much material and the infrastructure wasn't really in place. Um, luckily now the demand is there and certainly the industry is growing there and now the last piece of the puzzle is the infrastructure in place to process all these different inputs. We're primarily focused on cannabis and hemp. Mm -hmm. So by infrastructure you just mean the processing, like the biorefinery? Exactly. Processing um, with a, a different, um, with more than one end result, um, more than one application, whether it's textiles, whether it is um, paper-based packaging, whether it is bioplastics, whether that is um, some kind of alternative energy. Um, there are a lot of different ways um, to do it, and, and people who are much smarter than me are <laughs> thankfully in charge of that. Um, we're just really uh, fortunate to have some partners um, in that space. Who, who have been the most um, helpful allies for you? Um, the state has been very encouraging, I will say that, um, despite um, we were talking earlier about um, just you know the, the back and forth between um, uh, regulators and the bureaucracy red tape surrounding that has been, has been wild. Um, but uh, Cal Recycle, you know, the governor's office have, have been very encouraging. They're just, you know, like I was saying earlier, you know, they have their, their plates really full with, with uh, how much they should be taxing, giving out all these licenses, how are they going to deal with the, the uh, influx in cash, all these businesses. So a lot of times waste management and recycling is the basement level of what they're trying to accomplish. So um, they've been very helpful and, and partners like uh, Circular Systems, which are the um, manufacturing partners that we're building this biorefinery with mm -hmm. have been tremendous. Um, and they're focusing on textiles. They're focusing on textiles, yep. Um, we're uh, you know, developing a couple cool projects with them. Uh, they were just awarded the H&M Global Agents of Change Award for 2018, which is like the Nobel Peace Prize for fashion, mm -hmm. which was um, a very big deal for them. Uh, they were just voted. It came with some money too. It came with, yeah, some money as well. Um, they were uh, voted Time Magazine's uh, top 10 smartest sustainable ideas of 2018. So um, we're honored to be working so closely with them. Um, but I think, you know, innovation is, is, should be driving regulation. And that's a very slippery slope, um, especially given the way that uh, the exchange of information is so fast nowadays. Um, it's, it's very difficult to stay ahead of something like that. But um, I think California is doing a great job and they're doing what they can to stay ahead of that. Um, but the technology is here and it's, it's honestly a race against time.